No one's even talking about this, and this is the factor that'll decide the game, and this is why I think they'll win. It's an amazing time to be alive for a college football fan because no matter what happens in the national championship game between Washington and Michigan, we're going to get something fresh because the last time that Michigan won was 1997, and the last time the Huskies won the title was 1991. So both of these fan bases are pretty much starving, and they want this really bad. Both of these dates were actually from before I was even born. We get two first-time head coaches in the national championship game. Jim Harbaugh was previously 0-2 in the playoff. He got his first win. He's in the championship and Kalen DeBoer was never even in it. This is his first time. He's a complete virgin. Okay, that's really funny, but the last four national title winners have all been from the SEC, and that's completely broken this year. The precedent of northern teams can't play with southern teams, well, we broke that. We're getting some northern football, Big Ten versus Pac-12 in the national title. It's about to be amazing, and not to mention these teams are future conference rivals. I know Big Ten fans are already trying to claim Washington. You guys got to pipe down with that, all right? These teams are playing next year. It's going to be a great game, but we're focused on the now Pac-12 versus Big Ten. Two different opposing styles going at each other. Let's do it. Make sure you stick around to the end to see who I have winning the national championship. I'm Saturday Shenanigans and I post three college football videos a week along with YouTube shorts every single day. Subscribe so you never miss out on another great upload. How much does regular season talk matter? It does not matter at all because all I heard during the regular season was that Michigan played in a week Big Ten. They're really not that good. They're overrated. They're going to get smashed by Bama. Washington, they play in the Pac-12. Are you serious, guys? The Pac-12 is one of the best conferences in college football. They beat Oregon twice, although they were barely skating by in their games, but I told you guys Washington plays to their competition level. If they play an ASU, they're going to win 15-7. to If they play a Texas, they're going to get that game out. Every game that Washington plays is going to be close, and they're going to pull it out because they have the clutchest team in college football. They have Michael Penix, who should have won Heisman. There's just so many great storylines about this game, and we truly get the two best teams in college football. It is not a Georgia versus TCU fluke, guys. That's a good thing about this year, 2024. It cannot get as bad as a national championship as we saw last year, so we should all be happy. Sit back, eat our popcorn, and enjoy this one. This game will be decided in the first quarter. Now, you're probably thinking, Saturday shenanigans, what are you on? Did you do a line before creating this video? Maybe. Just maybe. But the reason is because these styles are so different. You have Michigan, which they want to pound you. They want to choke you. They want to milk the clock. They're not a super explosive team. They're going to run the ball with Blake Corum, get three to four yards per carry. That's all they need. They're going to wear you down through the entire game. And then you have Washington, which we know how they play. A Dunze, Polk, McMillan, the three-headed monster. They want to throw it downfield. They want to play their game. They want to be explosive. They want to score early and often. And Michigan's not like that. And Michigan is not a team that's built to come back in the game because of their non-explosive offense. Washington is. So if Washington gets a lead early, Michigan is in trouble. But the other way around. If Michigan gets a lead early, they are going to waste time. They are going on an eight-minute, a 12-minute drive all the way downfield that's going to wear down Washington and really deflate their confidence. Michael Penix Jr., the only way you could say it is that this guy is on a legendary run here in 2023, and the only way to slow him down, no, it's not to pressure him. He's already shown he could step up and throw, although Michigan does have a great defensive line, a lot better than what Washington saw against Texas. I think that's going to be a great matchup as well between those lines in the trenches, but it's not out scheming him. It's not pressuring him. It's not anything because this guy makes some throws that not even a lot of NFL players can. The way he can thread it in between the defensive back and the safety is unbelievable. The way that he can give his play players 50-50 balls that are 70-30 just because of how good he can throw it is unbelievable. The way to slow him down is to keep the ball out of his hands. That's seriously the only way, and that's exactly what Michigan's going to try to do. They're going to hold it as long as they can on offense with the run game. They're going to run first with Blake Corum. That's going to allow them to do play action with J.J. McCarthy. J.J. McCarthy is not the superstar guy like Michael Penix is, but Michigan plays an all-around type of ball on offense, and that's exactly what they're going to try to do. I have concerns for both teams. First of all, the Washington Huskies with Dylan Johnson. Their running back went down late in the Sugar Bowl against Texas. That was super unfortunate. And is he even going to play, first of all? And if he does, is he even going to be 100% or even 50 or 60? Because he's played hobbled all year, and he's a great running back that opens up a lot of throwing opportunities for Washington. And it's not just going to be him going out there and putting up 100, 150 yards, 200 yards like he did against Oregon and USC. That's not going to happen against Michigan. But he is such a smart player. He understands the rushes, and he could be a huge blocker to give Penix that extra extra time, that extra half second to get the ball out. And if they don't have him, they have a lot of inexperience at running back. And that's really going to give Michigan the advantage when they're trying to get to Penix. My concern about Michigan is this. 
When you look at their schedule, have they faced a quarterback or even an offense in the stratosphere, even on the same level as Washington? And that's absolutely not. They played Ohio State. They faced Kyle McCord. Oh my gosh, guys, I'm trembling. I'm scared. And then they faced Drew Aller for Penn State. So going into the college football playoff before they faced Milrow, they had pretty much faced no quarterback at all. And then when they faced Milrow, that's a totally different guy than Penix. Milrow's a great talent. He's got arm talent and leg talent, but overall, he's not as developed. He still needs a lot of time to get better, and that's what he's going to do next year for the Alabama Crimson Tide. But I'm afraid that Michigan's going to come out there and be shocked. Shocked, just like the Texas defense was against Michael Penix Jr. Washington will have a little bit tougher time throwing the ball downfield. I mean, of course, Texas had the 55th ranked secondary in college football. In most metrics, the Michigan Wolverines are in the top five or the top 10. But Washington's passing attack is so good, so elite, so unseen that even that Michigan knows what they're going to do. They know it's coming. They know the scheme. They know the game plan. They are not going to be able to stop it. Straight up, they're not going to be able to stop it at all. People seem to forget that the Washington Huskies won the Joe Moore Award this year for the most outstanding offensive line in college football because Michigan's defensive line, they made Alabama look silly. They made Alabama look like Colorado. I'm serious. That's how much they swarmed Jalen Milrow. And that's what people think is going to happen in this game as well. They think Penix is not even going to be able to have time to make reads, time for those developing routes. Washington's going to have to completely switch up their game plan, but I don't believe that at all. I really think this Washington Huskies line, I've watched them all year. They will give Penix just enough to make those throws. I mean, Texas's defensive line was supposed to dominate as well. Did they? I mean, this guy put up 430 on your head. So I really don't get the whole precedent that Michigan's just going to swarm him. No, not at all. I think it will be balanced. Michigan is favored by four and a half points. I'm taking Washington with a plus 4.5, and I'm also picking Washington to win outright. Yes, the Washington Huskies will be your 2023 college football national champions. Remember what I said earlier, guys, about the first quarter. Because of the contrasting styles, the first quarter matters so much, and it's a thing that not a lot of people are talking about. I believe that Washington will shock Michigan. Michigan has never seen an offense on this type of level. Washington's going to score early, and Michigan's just not built to come back. They're not built to come back at all. They like to play in front of the sticks. They like to play comfortable. They're not good when they're pinned in a position where they're uncomfortable, and that's exactly what's going to happen. Not a lot of people are expecting this, but Washington will be your 2023 college football playoff national champions. I said it here first. Make sure to come back to this video after the game's over. If I was right, which I probably am, you'll say, wow, Saturday shenanigans, you're a genius or not. You can yell at me, but either way, thank you guys so much for reaching the end of the video. I've been Saturday shenanigans, your home for unfiltered college football content. Make sure to subscribe so you join the best family in college football. Never miss out on another great upload like this, and I'll see you guys soon.